The following program contains shocking quotes from America's founding fathers. If you suffer from time spent in public schools, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your guidance counselor. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. The only talk show host who writes his own theme music, Randall Terry. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the number one Tea Party television program in America, self-proclaimed Randall Terry, the voice of resistance. We have got a special treat for you, part two, deuce of college-level leadership training filmed, yes, in a college. I'll be right back after a quick word from one of my illustrious friends. Hi, Professor Slotzenheimer here. Now, Perry and Terry did similar in the New Hampshire primary. Perry supernova early in the campaigning. He's sort of like a neutron star in a binary star system, sucking all the energy away from the other good Republican candidates. Now, Terry is similar. He's like a neutron star, sucking all the energy away, away from Obama, sending him to a parallel dimension, politically speaking. Now, I'm Professor Slotzenheimer, the famous cosmologist. Does that make Mitt Romney the famous cosmetologist? I'm just saying, he looks like he wears a lot of makeup. Welcome back to the program, friend. All right, we spent time recently in Denver, Colorado, campaigning, I'm campaigning for president, and we filmed a, show, uh, a classroom discussion that I had with students on leadership. We decided we would use those in the show because the content is good and because, frankly, we're burning the wick at both ends trying to double dip. All right, before I go there, let's just tip our hats to Obama's leadership regarding China and Iran. As you know, China has now passed the United States economically. China's leader was recently here. Obama and his minions were ooing and aahing over the new man. And of course, Iran has announced that it's g gone yet another step closer to obtaining nuclear weapons. And what do the Obama people do with the Iranian-Chinese growing mounting threat? They run like frightened schoolgirls. Yes, friend, I want you to know that running away from the schoolyard is in fact a form of leadership because all of the other frightened school children can chase you and run away too. All right, let's go to my classroom discussion on leadership. Yes, that was ugly. It was ugly, it was bitter, it was ironic. I was being a smart aleck. And by the way, another free bit of advice, since this is all free, Yes, I'm here as an unpaid public speaker. <laughs> um, the best way to learn history, in my opinion, is through biography. So if you want to learn the history of World War II, read all, uh, The Last Lion Alone, the, the biography of Winston Churchill. If you want to learn about the abolitionist movement, read All on Fire, the, the biography of, of um, William Lloyd Garrison. And I will tell you this. William Manchester's treatment of Churchill in, in The Last Line Alone, and then uh, his first book was The Last Line, Visions of Glory. Book number two was The Last Line Alone. Th book number three, Defender of the Realm, was not finished before his death. The family has contracted with somebody to finish it. The reason I'm spending this much time on this is this. In my opinion, I have told leaders this for 20 years. I get to speak to leaders regularly. I have told them that the single most important book that they can read on leadership, except for the scriptures themselves, is William Manchester's The Last Lion Alone. So anybody here who really wants to be a leader, you're not just here because you gotta have three credit hours, okay? But you wanna be a leader, read The Last Lion Alone by William Manchester. And the reason that's critical to come back to my point about friction is that Sometimes when you lead, you're leading a very small clutch of men and women, and you are very unpopular. Winston Churchill, at the low ebb of his career, had maybe three or four people that gave a hoot what he had to say. He was still in Parliament, 
In fact, one of my personal treasures is I have a, an autograph book that's got on this side Baldwin and on this side Churchill's signature. Stanley Baldwin was the prime minister who basically set England up for the war. He, pre he was a predecessor of Neville Chamberlain. Neville, Neville Chamberlain gets the heat for his appeasement, but it was set, the wheels were set in motion by Manchester, and then Baldwin, then Chamberlain. So in 36, when Churchill is at the low ebb of his career and Baldwin is at the height of his, I've got their signature side by side. Most people don't even know who Stanley Baldwin is. They know who Winston Churchill is. Because Churchill took the heat when he was at the front, when he was at the tip of the spear. And if you want to be a leader, don't expect everyone to be happy with you and certainly don't think that it's going to be a walk in the park and you've got to be prepared for the friction and the difficulty that emerges. And then, to use the Churchill paradigm, you've got to figure out a way over the mountain, around the mountain, through the mountain, blow the mountain up, whatever you have to do. You're going to have mountains of difficulty in front of you. Your job as a leader is to get through it, around it, over it. And it, it also, in my opinion, the, par the, the, the paramount figure, politically speaking, of the last century was, was Winston Spencer Churchill. Spencer Churchill. If you're going to study leadership, you need to study Churchill because of the ups, the downs, all the, all the incredible difficulties that he faced and the fact that when Adolf Hitler took Poland, then took France, Churchill stood up and said, you will have to, we'll fight you in the street with pitchforks. And, and the Germans blinked. They didn't invade England. And he held his position in his darkest hours when people were mocking him, vilifying him. He held his position. And then when England was in a crisis, they looked at him and said, well, you've been saying this all along. You lead us. So whatever it is that you want to lead in, business, politics, whatever, get your star, hopefully it's ethically guided, and then stick to it and expect resistance. Don't be surprised. Push through and get yourself some heroes. Get heroes. You've got to have heroes because most of your mentors you'll find are dead. I mean, really and truly, today, there's not many great leaders alive, alive today. There just isn't. The great leaders, I mean, they're, please, God, you know, bring some more. But the great leaders, for whatever cause, Gandhi was a great leader. Churchill, I mean, the people, William Lloyd Garrison, people for centuries, they're dead. And, and today we have managers. Today we have people that are calculated, people that are taking polls. It's so much more Ma Machiavellian. And you can be a great leader and be an evil person. You do understand that. Adolf Hitler was a demonically brilliant leader. That's why I say that you have to have ethics with leadership. Because if you have ethics without leadership, or rather if you have leadership without ethics, you could have Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler, whatever. So leaders can, there can be brilliant in a demonic dark sense leaders. There can be leaders that are incredibly courageous and just in their pursuit, and they're not Machiavellian, and those are the people that you need as heroes. You need guiding lights. Dr. Martin Luther King did more to influence me in my 20s than anyone alive. Just reading, reading, reading everything I could get my hands on about him, watching Eyes on the Prize, the PBS special, Coretta Scott King's biography of her husband, Why We Can't Wait, Stride Towards Freedom, Letter from the Birmingham Jail. I mean, just what did this man have to say? Because he was so heroic. He was so, he was a leader. He was out in front. All right, if you just join me, that's me teaching in Metro State College in Denver, Colorado when I was there on a recent trip. I'll be right back with more of this college education after this break. People who say they're atheists are really stupid. If they live their life by that principle, they leave no room for error. Hi, Joe Costello here, founder of Kylea Health and Energy. 
I've been making superb nutritional supplements for over 15 years, and from day one, I've partnered with Randall Terry, helping to fund his invaluable work in reclaiming our country's biblical and godly roots. I want to share with you a product that has changed hundreds of thousands of lives since its inception. Introducing the Total Living Drinks, Greens and Berry, the ultimate superfood formulas that provide you the nine essential areas of nutrition your body needs on a daily basis. Each serving of the Total Living Drink provides the life-giving phytonutrients that come from the equivalent of five servings of organic vegetables and berries, enzymes for better digestion and nutrient absorption, protein for building lean muscle mass so you can burn more fat for fuel, probiotics for better intestinal function, herbs for building energy and stamina, antioxidants for maximum immune function and disease prevention, and all the vitamins and minerals you need for slowing down aging and maximum health. You would have to take 30 to 40 capsules each day and spend almost $10 a day to match the over 30,000 milligrams of total nutrition in each scoop of the Total Living Drink. Order right now and get started on the amazing Total Living Drink. They come in two delicious flavors, Total Living Drink Greens and Total Living Drink Berry. And every single dollar we receive, we give a generous amount to Randall Terry's organization to help further his work and further the kingdom. Visit us online at the address on your screen and receive an online discount or call the toll-free number. Call today, and for the daily price of a latte, you can get back on the road to better health and energy with Kylea's Total Living Drink. On the channel? This is a soul kitchen. That's Randall Terry. Ha! Welcome back to the program, friend. I continue with leadership. I think 301 was an upper level BA college leadership course I was teaching. And oh, yes, they paid me some serious, serious money. All right. <clears throat> Take heat, be a servant. Don't play to the weakest member. Very critical in leadership. You're only as, your chain is only as strong as your weakest link. Many mistakes that people who are in leadership make is that they make their chain, they revolve their agenda, they make their goals revolve around the weakest element in their group. And they turn a fighting force into a mash unit. Do you understand the analogy? Mass units are the hospital units on the field of battle. I, I don't want the mass unit to lead the war, okay? And right now, there are a lot of groups out there that are trying so hard to not offend anybody, trying so hard to avoid confrontation, conflict, bad press. If you're gonna be a leader, you're gonna have bad press. Just accept it and move on. There's, you know, the only bad press is no press, as they say. So if you've got a cause that you're fighting for, you want, to trumpet your cause. And if you have to trumpet it through the ink barrels of the Denver Post or CNN, I was on CNN this morning. They did both their website and their TV network did stories about my presidential run. Is it favorable? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but they're covering me because I'm making news and because I'm leading. And if you're going to lead, you need to be able to trumpet your voice. And you need to not be worried about bad press. And you'll have to deal with it sometimes. I think Herman Cain was hurt by his bad press, it's safe to say. Um, but you're going to have to have heroes that instruct you and, you're not, and you don't want to play to your weakest link. Because if you do, the chain is going to be weak and you won't be able to accomplish your goals. Said people over here and said, will you be a part of the MASH unit? but we're not going to do and change everything that we're doing and changing for your sake, for the weak link. I love you, you're my friend, or I thank you for your support thus far, but you're gonna have timid souls that say, are you out of your mind, don't do this. And at that point, you just have to keep going forward. There's a passage, words of the gospel, um, every branch that bears fruit is pruned. So you might have like this really nice bouquet and then it has to be pruned so that it can bear more fruit. 
And when that pruning happens, it gets smaller and you think, oh no, this is horrible. Well, it might be the best thing that happened. On this very trip, we're on a 13 city, how many cities are we in? 12 city, 12 city trip. Bad things happen and then two days later, something good came in its place that was even better. So you sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. In case you didn't notice, I don't have notes in front of me. And they're not even written on the palm of my hand. <laughs> Does that mean we can start asking questions? Shortly. But you get to have one, and then other people can have one. We're not going to have a debate or, or a no, no, dialogue no, between no, us. No, no, definitely not. Thank you. So let me think. Andrew and Gary, you're with me all the time. I said, you're with me all the time. Is there anything else that you've heard me talk about with leadership that I might want to mention? <clears throat> I'll incorporate what he said, the false sales and, the, uh, and, and a clock. If you have a cause that you're fighting for, the, one of the best assets that you have is a beginning and an end. A clock. Whether it's a night, we're going to do this from 7 to 9, not 7 until whenever, or... Don't hold me to that, guys. Or you're going to have a one-month campaign. If you say to somebody, I want you to join my organization, and you're going to be with me for the rest of your life, you're not going to have many people that will follow you. People will get involved in a fight, a cause that has a beginning and an end and has achievable goals. One of the mistakes people make is that they oversell. What did we just see in New Hampshire? We saw... Governor Huntsman put all his eggs in the New Hampshire basket. Did any of you watch the election results that night? When it was all done, what did he say? In New Hampshire. We got third place and we got a ticket to ride to South Carolina. What, so that you can get off in South Carolina? What? <laughs> and then he got there and he had 1%. You know, I was watching his speech and I thought, all right, he's got a room full of people that have poured their hearts out for him. He's got to make them feel good about the world. And then he's going to go and he's going to pull out in South Carolina. But he was overselling. He was overselling. He didn't have a ticket to ride. He had a, his ticket was punched and they said, end of the line for you, buddy. Thank you, Randall. I'll be right back. Don't go away. We have got to name names in this battle. That is the history. That is the theology of the church. And if the IRS says, no, you can't name a name, you have to decide at that minute who is the Lord of your tongue? Who is the Lord of your pen? Who is the Lord of the gospel? Is it Jesus or the IRS? Hi, Joe Costello here, founder of Kylea Health and Energy. I want to share with you a product that has changed hundreds of thousands of lives. Introducing the Total Living Drinks, Greens and Berry, the ultimate superfood formulas that provide you the nine daily essential areas of nutrition your body needs. Each scoop provides the life-giving phytonutrients that come from the equivalent of five servings of organic vegetables and berries, probiotics for better intestinal function, antioxidants for disease prevention, and vitamins and minerals for establishing maximum health. Order now and get started on the Total Living Drink. When you do, a generous gift will go to Randall Terry's organization to help further his work and further the kingdom. Order online and receive an online discount or call the toll-free number. Call today and enjoy maximum health and energy. Only one link in the chain of destiny can be handled at a time. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome back to the program, friend. One more hopefully inspirational and educational installment on leadership from Metro State College in Denver, Colorado. There he is, me. So if you go to somebody and say, we're going to do X, Y, Z, and it's this monumental thing that you've never done before, you're just not going to get people to follow you. Have something in front of you that's doable with hard work, sacrifice, some risks, but it's still doable. And if you fail in it, at least you can say, we tried. We tried. <clears throat> so 
the false paradigms one is a little bit more difficult because it's so, it's so germane to our work. But I'll, I'll say it in, in principial form. If somebody stood up in 1850 and said, we don't need to change the law on slavery. We're going to end slavery by freeing all the slaves on the Underground Railroad. And he was eloquent and he was passionate and he stood up and he swung his arm around like that. You have to look at him and say, the guy's crazy and you have to smile and nod and then you leave the room. Victory in that fight meant it became a criminal act to own another human being in all 50 states. Don't tell me that you're going to end slavery by rescuing people on the Underground Railroad. No. The Underground Railroad was heroic, just, needed, historic, but it wasn't going to end slavery. So if somebody, if you're in leadership and you give a false paradigm, you give a false solution, you're going to undercut yourself. Don't fall for tawdry, cheap political tricks. Say the truth. I think it was... Um, Patrick Henry in his Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech at the opening, he said, I'm paraphrasing, he said, please don't anyone be offended. People see the same thing by different lights. And I have a very different opinion than the men that just spoke. People are happy to, to embrace the illusions of hope. Illusions of hope. He said, me, for my part, I'm ready to know the worst, see the truth, and prepare for it. So sometimes the best thing that you can do is say, say to people in whatever leadership position you're in, this is going to be really hard. It's going to be really, really difficult. But hang in there. Hang in there with me. Let's see what happens. Let's see what fruit this bears. And then by giving people a true paradigm and not a false one, you'll retain their respect. You can only trick people once or twice. If you can trick someone over and over and over who stands with you, I mean, you know, you'd make a, you'd make a, a good Mormon or one of the, I don't want to pick on Mormons, you'd make somebody good, those California groups that take all these drugs and hope that they're going to fly up to heaven or get in a spaceship or something. I mean, you have to be able to keep a balance between vision and leadership and the goal that we're attaining and our current reality on the ground. And with that, my friends, giving this gentleman over here the first question, I come Excellent. to the questions. You, you, were, you were quoted... By the way, um, anybody who wants to be on the TV show, you can be. If you don't want to be, you don't have to be. So we've got a two-camera shoot. I do a daily television show. This will all be edited out, what I'm saying now. And we have the um, ability to edit anything we want. So anyone who doesn't want to have their face on TV, no problem. I don't, I don't need you for my show. If you want, like if you want your question to be on, we'll put it on. I'm not afraid of any confl conflict or debate, none of that. It doesn't bother me. So when you ask your question, say, I'd like this on camera or I would not like this on camera, and we will honor it immediately. Oh, is that fair? Yeah. All right. Sir, on camera or off? On camera, why not? <laughs> Because in essence, in essence, I mean, if anyone were just to cut that out, you know, and just see what you said, you know, reap what you sow, you know, they would just say that, okay, you know, you're advocating violence. Good question. Very good. And I've taken a lot of heat for that. Um, first of all, I do not advocate violence. Uh, I'll give you the framework of how that, because in the media world, there are things called sound bites. I could talk for five minutes to a journalist, and they could cut... Why are you watching him? Don't you have a life? All right, I'll be right back with a word from George Washington. If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have dwelt in the land of silence. When I thought, my foot slips, thy steadfast love, O Lord, 
held me up. Hi, Joe Castello here, founder of Kylea Health and Energy. I want to share with you a product that has changed hundreds of thousands of lives. Introducing the Total Living Drinks, Greens and Berry, the ultimate superfood formulas that provide you the nine daily essential areas of nutrition your body needs. Each scoop provides the life-giving phytonutrients that come from the equivalent of five servings of organic vegetables and berries, probiotics for better intestinal function, antioxidants for disease prevention, and vitamins and minerals for establishing maximum health. Order now and get started on the Total Living Drink. When you do, a generous gift will go to Randall Terry's organization to help further his work and further the kingdom. Order online and receive an online discount or call the toll-free number. Call today and enjoy maximum health and energy. George Washington said, nothing can be more hurtful to the service than the neglect of discipline. For that discipline, more than numbers, gives one army the superiority over another. If we in the church militant are going to prevail on the social and political fields of battle in this country over our adversaries, we must have discipline. We must have the discipline and the courage to hold to the truth, to proclaim the truth, and to live out the truth no matter what. And then we will prevail. <laughs>